Okay, so this object today is a basket from a woman's grave. It's from a, a site called Hierakonopolis, and it's from about 3600 BC. And as you can see here from the title of the slide, we're still in the pre-dynastic period. So what that means is we're at the time before there were pharaohs or a unified culture in ancient Egypt. Um, this is the same timeline I showed you before, so we're still focused in the Nakata period. Um, and like I said, the basket that we're going to be looking at is from about 3600 BC. So here's a map that you're all familiar with. This is from your, your atlas book. And I've got a red arrow pointing to Hierakonpolis. And I don't want to say that name too many times, so I'm just going to uh, point it out here. And remember, we, we've talked about Nakata. So this whole period is called the Nakata period. And we also have Bhutto here, and I'll bring this up later. We find some pottery from the Bhutto Mahdi culture in this particular uh, grave site. Now, before I start on this, I do want to talk a little bit about the Neolithic period in farming. And I talked a bit about this before in a previous lecture. So the Neolithic means New Stone Age, and really a better definition of that for our class is this is when people started farming. So either you know, growing plants like wheat and barley, or having domesticated animals like cattle, goats, and, and sheep. Um, first evidence, now information on this changes a lot in terms of where the earliest we found, but so far the, the earliest evidence we have is from um, the Fayum area and Lower Egypt, which is in the Delta. And I've got a red arrow here. It's hard to see. I didn't realize this map was a little bit blurry, but there's the Fayum area around 5400 BC. Uh, at this point, we don't find any evidence of permanent structures, but that will happen soon after because as I described before, when you start planting plants, you don't want to move around. And I mentioned cattle, sheep, and goats. And then you've got um, the typical plants that you find in early civilization, especially in the Middle East. You can find these um, in the Sumerian period, you can find these in, um, if you go north into the Palestinian area, um, you can find emmer wheat, barley, and so on. And as I said, these aren't indigenous to Egypt, meaning they didn't grow there. So they were in, brought in um, by early farmers and then it spread all throughout Egypt. Okay, so this image I've shown you before, so in the, um, the lecture where I talked about an Akata mummy, I showed you this image to talk about a pit burial. Now I want to go into this uh, particular um, pit grave in a little bit more detail. So I mentioned before it dates to about 3600 BC and it was found in a large cemetery, which I'll talk about in just a bit. Um, the cemetery itself is called HT or HK43, so Hierakonpolis. 43, and it's burial number 333, so 333. So if you uh, wanted to look up more information on this, you certainly certainly could. And I've given you um, uh, an, e uh, an article to look at, which is where I'm pulling most of my information. And I give you the citation for this particular mummy. Now, what you can see here, or a uh, body, I should say, uh, you can see some pottery and then you can see the outline of the body. And let me see if I can um, do some writing on here. It's like here's her head, and we know this is a woman. And then you can sort of see the outline of the body here. So these are the knees, and then you've got the, the basket. Now this is interesting for a couple of reasons. This is why I wanted to talk about it. First, it's a women's burial. So normally, you know, when you talk about these, these mummies, especially when you get to the, the Old Kingdom period, most of the mummies are, are male and upper class. So we're, this um, body was found in a site that had about 450 burials. And scholars have thought that this is sort of a worker's village, worker's area, like people doing their normal jobs. So not really elevated in society. Um, 3600 BC is dated to about Nakata II. We talked about that in a previous lecture. Now, this particular woman, they dug a little pit, um, put her body down, and then she was covered with matting. And so that's why if you look at the image again, it's not very clear where her body parts are. Um, depending on which gravesite you're looking at, there are quite a few grave goods. And we've seen with her 
There are a number of pots and of course this basket, which I'll talk about. Now, um, maybe she was an important person. It's hard to say with these smaller burials because it's not clear whether she was an important person to her village or maybe an important person to her family and they decided to bury her with a number of really interesting items. Uh, speaking of that, here's some archaeological objects that were found in the basket that she was buried with. So what you're seeing here is sort of the, the back and the front of this uh, thing called a pallet. And it's thought to be like a cosmetic pallet, meaning, and we know that, you know, as I put over here, she had things like red ochre and galena. So these are different colors um, of minerals. And it looks like what she probably did with these pallets is that you, you grind them up in the center and then you wear them as, as makeup. Um, there is a human headed amulet or a little statue like object. You've got these pins or awls, and then you've got a comb, which is pretty interesting. So she was buried with these, what I would call like hard objects, as well as the pottery that she was buried. Um, now what's really interesting is she had a, a number of items that were discovered within this basket that was buried with her. And so um, within that basket were some of those objects I just showed you. But when they took a, a better look at this particular basket, they found that they could look at what, was, what else was in there. And so I've sort of labeled these as sort of soft remains. So they're not hard like stone, but mostly they're plants. And so 11 types of plants were found in her basket. So, and you, you know, you don't need to memorize these, but um, a couple of things that they found were dill. So for, probably for cooking, um, there's an object called desert dates, which are edible, various edible tubers. And these were roasted, so they were cooked first. Um, and of course, rushes, that was what her basket was made of as well. And what's really interesting too, is that you had wood remains. So there was a, a couple of slivers of wood and scholars aren't exactly sure what, what kind of wood it is. It was either cedar, cypress, or fir. But what's really interesting is that those, that those type of woods do not grow in Egypt. They were brought in through some type of trade. Uh, so very early on in Nakata II, you've got trade happening probably up into the Middle East. And so it can tell you a little bit about the economy. And of course, we talked about this before with a body being placed in a, a certain orientation that can probably tell us a little bit about um, religious practices as well. Now, of course, what all these plants are telling us is what people ate. So there's something called subsistence diet. These are, these are things that, um, that helps them to survive. And what they're probably doing with a lot of these are hunting and gathering. Um, we also know from other sites that um, there were um, large amounts of emmer wheat found um, and barley and evidence of domesticated cattle. So these people were also farming. Um, a couple of interesting things, when you look at objects from the rest of the burial site, and again, I said there's you know, about 450 of these, you find um, bodies in various states of sort of preparation. So you've got trim beards on the, the males, dyed hair, clipped fingernails, and that, you know, I just talked about cosmetics. So um, what does this tell you about their ideas of the afterlife? So they're preparing to go on into the afterlife and live a normal life. So they want to look their best. That's probably what's happening here. Um, I mentioned emmer wheat already. Now what's also really interesting is that their pottery style is from Bhutto Mahdi. And if you go back to, oops, that's spelled wrong. That should be, um, the I shouldn't be there. But if you go back to that first slide and look at the map, Bhutto is in the Delta region and pottery styles do travel up and down um, usually in the Nakata period, they have their own styles of pottery that spread out from there. But uh, many in this particular site um, have pottery in the style from Bhutto Mahdi. And it's possible that a lot of these people living in this village came from the north and then moved, moved south. So anyway, last, last slide. What can this basket tell us? Well, it, as you can see, it can tell us quite a bit. Um, I would advise you to read that article where you can get a lot more detail about some of this about what's happening in this particular uh, gravesite, but it can tell us about economy. 
So you've got slivers of wood found buried with her that do not grow in Egypt. So the wood is being brought in, and then she was buried with, with some of it. Um, you've got these jars. That also talks about some type of economy. And remember, I talked about in a previous lecture where you're not getting jars like this until you have agriculture where enough people are fed and then there's time to actually create these particular things. And of course, they also store the food that's being grown or various liquids. Um, you know, also can think about the fact that the objects in graves are essentially throwaway objects. So these are objects that are taken out of circulation and put into a grave and then buried with the person. Now, of course, they're not thinking about these as being thrown away, but it does tell you a little bit about uh, the economy and what's happening in this particular time where they obviously have excess materials to bury with people. Now, it's a little bit tough to talk about sustainability this, this early but you know you can, as I put here, think about these throwaway jars and think about the imported wood and what that's telling about the sustainability of this economy for these particular people at this really early point, so 3600 BC, in this particular gravesite for this woman.